This episode is made possible by our sponsor, Landmark College, the college for students who learn differently, offering comprehensive supports for students with ADHD and other learning differences, both on campus and online. Learn more at lcdistraction.org. Hello, and welcome to Distraction. I'm your host, Dr. Ned Hallowell. We have a real treat for you today. My dear friend and colleague, John Rady, is joining us live on the program. I'm delighted to be here with you, Ned. It just sounds like it's going to be fun. It will be. It will be. We're, we're devoting today's show to ADHD. The diagnosis, treatment, the good parts, the bad parts, while talking about it all and answering questions from our listeners. John and I co-authored three books, Driven to Distraction, Answers to Distraction, and Delivered from Distraction. In addition to being an author, John is Associate Clinical Professor of Psychiatry at the Harvard Medical School, and really this is a great treat to to have you join our podcast today. John, welcome. Oh, I'm very glad to be with you, Ned. We're we're, uh, such old friends, and and this is uh, such an important uh, area to educate people and to get people on board with the right thinking. Okay. Hello, Mercedes. Do you have a question for us? Yes, I do. So I'm an actuary, so I still have to take exams on top of working. And, for example, the one that I'm taking now requires 400 hours of study. Oh, my God. And we do get some time at work to study, about 115 hours. So I still have 285 hours to get in outside of work, and I work 9 to 5. Well, you're obviously extremely smart. Yes, yes, it's very (laughs) difficult. And then they have about a 30% pass rate. So wow. I definitely Ooh. fail them a lot yeah, yeah. before I pass. So to my question, I still I take Adderall. I've been taking it for nine years now. And I have a lot of trouble managing it while I'm studying because if I take it in the morning, it will run off, run out by the end of the day, of the work day. And then I have to study after work. So then a lot of times I'll take more and then I won't sleep. And I'll just get in this really terrible cycle of taking more the next day and getting less and less sleep. Well, Mercedes, this is a common problem we see with children all the time. And the way I solve it with my patients, and I'm sure John does the same, is you want to take a long-acting stimulant in the morning right after breakfast. And then right a, after a, breakfast? Yeah. And then a second pill, what I call the homework pill, of a, uh-huh. sh- of a short-acting stimulant around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And you want to time it so it doesn't interfere with sleep. So Before a typical regimen would be, let's say... Vivance is your long-acting pill. Take 30 mm-hmm. or 40 milligrams of that in the morning. Mm-hmm. And then, say, use 10 milligrams of Adderall uh, around 3.30 in the afternoon for your homework pill, for your evening pill. Okay. Five yeah, I, <laughs> I, I prefer using uh, Focalin. Uh, actually, you can take oh, really? it a little later. Yeah, yeah. For the, for the uh, homework, uh, for, for the nighttime. You can uh-huh. use it's not it doesn't it's not as long lasting as uh, uh, short acting Adderall. So is that a uh, prescription pill or is that over the counter? Oh no, that's a, definitely a prescription pill. It's a it's a form of Ritalin, uh, but uh, okay. that's what I usually do. It it just gives a little more control over when you're going to be focused and and also okay. let you drop off easier. Too. So would you say ten, to ten, 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 10 milligrams, John? Yeah, yeah, I would. I, I that's what I would do if she were my patient. That's what, what I would do, say. What is it again? Sorry, Focalin. F O C A L I N. It's the D isomer of of methylphenidate. So, you know, and they're all in the same class. I mean, they're all amphetamines, basically. Mm-hmm. So, so still take Adderall in the morning. And oh then yeah. yeah. Well, the long acting though, Mercedes. So yes. Either yeah. either Vivance or Adderall XR. I I prefer Vivance. Uh, I think it works better. But mm-hmm. either one of those, uh, Adderall XR or Vivance, for your morning okay. dose. That's what I actually right now I have. 30 milligram extended release Adderall and then the 10 milligram not extended release. Okay, you you might ask your doctor just try Vivance because uh, it usually works better than Adderall. Insurance won't pay for it until you try Adderall first, but then it'll Uh pay for it. And for most people, Vivance works better. I find that as well. It it they it lasts a bit longer, and you can Mm -hmm. titrate it. You you can adjust it a little better than you can with the. Adderall, you can increase or decrease. You know, it's it's uh, it's something you should learn about. 
go on Google awesome. and learn all about uh, Vyvanse because I think you can you can dissolve yeah. it and take a little bit here, a little bit there. Great. This is wonderful. Easier solution than I expected. it. <laughs> well, a lot of people, a lot of doctors don't think about the – you know, this homework pill idea, the, the notion that the it wears off and so you're left to, for the late afternoon and evening with, with no coverage. And, yeah, and, um, it's really tough then. Yeah. Getting to sleep, I always have a struggle. Yeah, so let's hope the this regimen carries you through to pass the rest of these devilishly difficult exams. <laughs> yeah. And congratulations, <laughs> Mercedes. You deserve oh, a lot you of so a lot of credit. You're it's one of the toughest uh, one of the toughest professions to enter an actuary. Yeah, I don't want to give it up. No, don't give it up. That would be a good example. Yeah, don't don't give it up. Just get the most mileage you can out of medication. Okay, thanks a lot for your call. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Hello. Hello. Hi, Scott. You're on with Ned Hallowell and John Rady. Well, hello, sir. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Well, tell us about yourself, Scott. I love that question. <laughs> I was told we only had a short time. Uh, well, in specific context, I am soon to be 56, and last year came right up close to, I, can, I don't think I can use the word diagnosis, but with an awareness, certainly, of ADD and me, and for the last year have been what I think to be successfully on and with Adderall to help with those traits. Mm -hmm. And uh, I learned of that calling it traits. But now my question, and I bring that to you today, is what's necessary for me or one to officially be considered now as having ADD? And that's, that's probably, that's me right now this morning. What it takes for someone to be officially considered as having ADD? Well, John, John, why don't you take that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Officially, it means what? I mean, if, if, if when you're younger, we might recommend that you get a, a neuropsychological battery to see other if there are other learning issues that you might address. But if you're 56, you've already had a diagnosis. Or they wouldn't be putting you on Adderall. So that's pretty official. Did you say um, you're you're taking Adderall? Yeah. Oh, you. you Okay, he so, said he was taking Adderall and it helped his traits, correct? Yes. 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 And just a small part of the backstory is after years, literally years, I could say safely decades, of really looking at taking medication for something like attention deficit disorder and hyperactivity was really a bad thing. All of the kids and families that I dealt with, I looked at it as such as uh, – all of the things I've learned from you were the, are the, the negative things through history. Looked at it as bad, broken, dysfunctional. That can't be me. Uh, so, no, I was a hater in that sense. So when I learned of the condition and the trait at a deeper level, for me, it was a big thing to turn and say, hey, 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 this could be me and medication might help. To make that shift was a big turn. So I went and spoke with a counselor and then with my doctor with a long history of what I think to be quite accurate. And they said, hey, let's try this. And we did. And within, I, I can't say minutes, you know, but that day I knew that there was a night and day difference between how I was responding to distraction and now. And then finding, if you want to go further, here's this $1,400 assessment that we would do. And I thought, I don't, one, have $1,400 for an out-of-pocket test for you to tell me what I am or I am not. I've spoken with these professionals, and that's a little bit more of the backstory and a little bit more of me. But well, Again, I think, I think if the doctor who prescribed it felt that your symptoms were enough to be interfering with your life, then that is the diagnosis. Uh, mm. You know, there, there's a lot of ways to get a diagnosis. Sure, you could do anything from, uh, as I said, neuropsychological testing to some other kind of measures. Uh, but if you have the symptoms, and you obviously have listed them quite well enough to convince one MD that you had the diagnosis, and then you tried the medicine, and voila, you know, you're, mm. you've are confirmed it. So you could probably say, I don't know why you can't say you're officially diagnosed. Yeah, I mean, you know, he, wouldn't, I, he wouldn't have prescribed the medication for you unless he diagnosed you. It really, uh, Scott, the diagnosis of 
this condition, like most conditions in psychiatry, is done by your history. Testing, uh, I'm glad you didn't spend the 1400 because you, you, you don't need it. Your, your history is, is where the diagnosis lies or doesn't lie. And uh, uh, the doctor who prescribed for you, you said he took a careful history. That's, that's, the, that's the gold standard. That's the closest thing we have to a definitive test is your history. Right, and if you've listed it out for 50-some years, uh, then it's pretty certain that you have it. And, and, and mm-hmm. But what, what you should do to really embrace it is spend, instead of 1400 spend $14 and buy our book, Delivered from Distraction, and read about it and learn about it. And, uh, you know, you, you really can... Uh, uh, you don't have to read the book all the way through. Pick and choose the chapters that interest you and, and uh, seem to apply to you. The As you see yourself and learn about yourself, uh, you can really embrace it, whereas you spend most of your life fearing it. Now you can embrace it and, and, and make friends with it, and, and then, mm-hmm. you can, then you can manage it much more successfully. So, Thank you, both of you and your team, for your work. Thank you. Thanks for calling in. Mm-hmm. Yes, thank good you. call. If you'd like to join us for this conversation, please call us at 844-55-CONNECT. Okay, welcome to our next caller, Jim. Jim, you're on the air with Ned Hallowell and John Rady. Welcome. Oh, thank you. I'm very happy to uh, to be on the line with you. My name is Jim from Chicago, Illinois, and I've done a few different alternative therapies in addition to you know the medication. And I've heard a bit about the transcranial magnetic stimulation. I don't know how deep that research is, but I just wanted to throw out that question if that's something that you guys have been involved in as far as the research and and what your thoughts are on that. I have not been involved in it, nor am I up on the the latest and and aware that uh, there's been any any studies on TMS and ADHD. Ned, do you know? Yeah, no, not for ADHD. It's mostly for other conditions. So, uh, Jim, I don't think you want to bark up that tree. But you'd also you'd like John and me to talk about alternative treatments in general. Is that correct? That would be great, yeah, if, if you could talk about that and whatever the latest um, is with, with the effectiveness of, of new things that are happening. Well, I know what John's favorite non-medication treatment is, so take it away, John. Okay. My, my favorite is exercise, is daily exercise. And the best kind of exercise is the exercise that keeps you coming back to it. And that's the biggest problem with people is they stop. And you want to get involved in something either that you'll continue on your own or continue with the group, which is probably the best, to get your heart rate up, get your brain activated, get your brain moving, and that then goes for, it all helps you to focus and maintain your focus. And then that's acutely for that day, but then over time, you get better. Your focus gets better, even if you're on medicine or, uh, you know, you expand your working memory, which is a big part of what the problem with ADD is. You improve your executive function both that day and if you're getting fitter, then uh, that gets better over time on its own. And uh, so, uh, and, and then if you're challenged by certain uh, periods of time like a test or getting a report in then to have a what I call a bolus of exercise uh, like a bolus of medicine before you tackle it uh, because that can help you do that much better on whatever tasks is uh, before has been difficult or a bit befuddling so that's that's one of the things that we certainly recommend Okay. And, and, you know, the DOOR program itself, which is now defunct, it, it nonetheless continues to have merit, and it is a specialized form of exercise that stimulates the cerebellum. So someone wants to do this at home, uh, things like standing on one leg with your eyes closed, uh, juggling, sitting on an exercise ball, anything that challenges balance and coordination will stimulate the cerebellum. 
And it turns out, because of connections between the cerebellum and the frontal lobes, that this is good for both reading problems, dyslexia, as well as ADD. But my favorite non-medication treatment, and John is well aware of this, uh, John's favorite is exercise. My favorite is, is human connection. And, uh, you know, my plea and, and uh, trumpet call is go connect. Make time for a friend. Make time for the people in your life that you love. Forgive that sibling that you've been feuding with, you know. Go back to the club you dropped out of. Uh, rejoin the religion you grew up in. Uh, just take mega doses of connection. And again, it doesn't have to be connection to a person. It can be connection to a pet, connection to nature, connection to beauty, connection to a favorite place, connection to a favorite piece of music. Everybody, but particularly people with ADD, uh, thrive when they're living in a matrix of connection and they wither and wilt when they're living in a matrix of, of disconnection. Thank you guys for all the work that you do. And uh, it, it's certainly been a pleasure uh, being on the line with you. Thanks so much. Good luck to you. Okay, take T care. Take care. The episode you just heard was made possible by our sponsor, Landmark College, the college for students who learn differently, offering comprehensive supports for students with ADHD and other learning differences, both on campus and online. Learn more at lcdistraction.org.